In one sentence, what makes this a really uh, difficult technical problem? I, I think it's just really hard to fit all of the knowledge and all of the languages that humans have produced into models um, that have a limited capacity and have a limited size in terms of what is feasible uh, to use and to serve. And so it's really hard to fit all of the human knowledge that's so diverse um, into a, a single entity. Curse and multilinguality, yeah, very nice. Ahmed? Yeah, I would add, this is like a perfect machine learning problem to, to battle with. But also, like Marzia mentioned about the data, now what became also clear, like the small nuances in the data make a huge difference in the model performances. This is more important in the multilingual because we normally want to audit the data when you want to cover with the model of 101 languages. But that is a big challenge, right? You have how can you branches, be sure about yeah. the data quality? So it's, I mean, we know how challenging it was because we passed through <laughs> these stages, yeah. but it is extremely nice, but very challenging problem. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think that the complexities of humanity as a race and then putting that into individual languages, that's something that we are trying to capture without knowing that because we don't speak those languages and uh, there might not be evaluation sets or like uh, more comprehensive and proper ways to uh, just uh, assess how we are doing. So that's one of the main challenges uh, to, to work on multilingual. Yeah, I think this is at the heart of actually the challenges we see with the next generation of AI models. So multilingual is both scarce coverage, so you need to work well in low sample areas, but also your ground truth is often unknown and you have the curse of capacity. So you have to be highly efficient and adapt on the fly. So for me, this is what makes it one of the most fundamental problems to measure progress on.